Hello and welcome to a special whiteboard training video. I'm Isaiah Hankel, a cheeky scientist. Today I'm talking to you about the top five gotcha interview questions that you will face as a PhD. Now, the, the purpose of these questions from an employer's standpoint is to test you, to test your thinking. Are you stuck in academia with a limited academic mindset? Or have you changed your thinking to think like an industry professional? Have you started thinking about the business that you'll be working in at that company? Are you committed to that company? Are you uh, building a case for yourself to be the best candidate at that company? Uh, or are you considering all options? Are you stuck in that academic mindset of being in the discovery mindset, everything's possible, talking about theory? Or can you show them, I want this job at this company for these reasons? That's what they're looking for. They know you don't have industry experience or probably not enough industry experience. You can still get hired. Can you tell them how you're going to learn what you need to learn? Do you even know what you need to learn? That's what they're testing you on. So let's go through these five questions. Number one, what's our culture or working environment or both? And would you be a fit for it? Right? So what is our culture? What is our working environment? Would you be a fit for it? Now, these questions, they're not going to come out from the employers verbatim. They can ask them in a variety of different ways. What they're asking here, though, is have you even thought about the type of team you're going to be working with? Do you understand their project management methodology or even philosophy? Have you talked with anybody at the company in an informational interview to find out? If not, you're in trouble. Have you read through their website? Have you researched the company? Have you read online what you can find out about their company culture? The worst thing that, from an employer standpoint, is to hire somebody that's going to disrupt their current team. They need to hire somebody, right? But the pain of hiring the wrong person is more than the pleasure they would get from hiring any person to help with the work, right? So their number one concern, the number one thing they're trying to do is avoid hiring somebody who's going to disrupt their team by being awkward, arrogant, defensive, etc. Someone who doesn't understand how people work in industry in the first place, okay? So this is something you need to focus on. What type of company is it? What is their culture? How do they get things done? Do they move incredibly quickly? What size company are they? Small, medium, large? Where are they in their growth phase? Do they have any mergers or acquisitions they just did? Showing knowledge of this will answer that question. So the way you answer this is, oh, I know your culture is X, Y, Z. Usually they put their type of culture, their company values on the website. Uh, I will fit well into this culture because my values align with those values and give them specific examples. Tell them, I like to work on small teams and I know that you have a small team, uh, a small data scientist team or a small management consulting team. Uh, show knowledge that you understand how those teams are structured, right? Where there's a lead data scientist and two data analysts and maybe a data architect, a statistician. Find that information out. Let them know. What their concern is is you don't know how they work. Tell, show some understanding that you understand how they work on the team that you'll be on, in the department, the company overall. Be prepared for that question. Do not be a deer in headlights. Don't turn it on them and ask them about it. You have to show some knowledge here. You need to do your research. Number two, have you ever used XYZ instrument or process or tool? They're gonna ask you a specific question here, okay? Have you used you know, the X1000 system high throughput cytometer or device or medical device or whatever it might be, knowing that you have not used it, knowing that you're coming out of academia where you're doing a lot of things by hand, using instruments that are 10, 20 years old. In industry, right, advanced robotics are probably doing what you're doing in academia right now, okay, or technicians are. They're hiring you because you're a PhD. They're hiring you for your mind. So they're testing you here. They want to see how you're going to respond. It's just like your thesis committee trying to get you to finally say the words, I don't know, but here's how I would find out. And that's what you need to say here. I don't know, you know, maybe I've heard of that instrument, I don't know how to use it, but I can learn quickly. I can learn faster than any other job candidate. Now, a lot of PhDs tell me, well, I shouldn't say that, it sounds arrogant. It sounds like I'm saying I'm better than somebody. Yes, you need to tell them you're better than all the other job candidates. You need to have confirmation bias when it comes to your job search. I don't know how to use this instrument, but I'll learn faster than anybody. I can learn on my own extremely well. That's what my PhD taught me to do. And I'll come in and work with your team in whatever way is best for them to learn very quickly. 
I can get up to speed faster than anybody else. I can learn on the job better than anybody else. That's what they want to know. And that, you know, as a PhD, you are that doctor of learning. PhD is a doctor of philosophy. Philosophy is knowledge and the ability to ascertain knowledge. You're literally a doctor of learning. Lean into that. That's what they're testing here. Number three, are you open to other jobs here? Or are you interviewing elsewhere? Any type of question where they're testing to see whether or not you're interviewing, you're looking at other jobs, et cetera, what are they really testing? Think about it. They're testing your commitment to the position you're applying to. Are you, did you just spray and pray online when it came to your resume? Did you upload hundreds of resumes? Most of you did, that's okay. Don't act like it on the interview. Find the reason that this company is your number one position. Okay, so you would answer, you, you, you don't lie, you say, yes, I've applied to other companies. You can even say, I would be open to discussing other positions here because I want to help this company in whatever way is best for them, but I know I'm a perfect fit for this position that I'm applied to, and I'm committed to doing it in the best job, uh, the best job I can to get everything done that this position requires. You see that commitment level? Now, as PhDs, we think that's far out, right? That's radical. I couldn't show that commitment because, I'm, again, I'm showing confirmation bias. You need to show confirmation bias. That's, that's the number one thing they want to see from you. Do you know the position you're applying to is your number one choice? If they extend an agreement to you, a, a job offer, will you take it or are you wasting their time? I'm applying elsewhere, but this company is my first choice for XYZ reason. Every company can be your first choice for one particular reason because every company has pros and cons. You need to build a case for yourself and for the interview before you have it on why you want to work at this company in that position. Build your case because you're going to go to court, essentially, during the interview and have to explain your case, why you're the best fit, why you want this job at that company. Number four, why are you leaving academia? Why do you want this job? I cannot believe how many PhDs blow this question. They, like they've never thought about it. There's been people that have ran for prime ministers, presidents, uh, who have lost because they didn't know how to answer this question. Why do you want to be prime minister? Why do you want to be president? Uh, we know how valuable rationale is as PhDs. Do you have a rationale? Or do you just want more money? That's bad rationale. You're tired of writing grants? Bad rationale. You don't like your PI? Bad rationale. T tell them why. Focus on the larger humanity issue here. You want to see your scientific knowledge, your engineering knowledge, your specialty knowledge translated to a product, a service, a treatment that helps people. Okay, that's great rationale. That's why you want to leave. Your plan was always to leave academia to do something where you could serve people in a greater way. You have a reason. It's always been your plan. There's strong rationale. That's why you have to build this case beforehand. Number five, and finally, what do we do here? What does the role demand? Uh, I would say this uh, is the most shocking to me You know, for interviews that I do interviews that I coach PhDs on, when I hear back from top employers that have partnered with us who are hiring our PhDs or who are interviewing them, I'm dumbfounded by how many PhDs don't know what the company does. Like, you're a PhD, you have a background in research, you can research information better than anybody else, any other job candidate, you're choosing not to, it's just laziness, or you're not thinking about it. You need to do this, you have gotta research thoroughly what that company does, have an elevator pitch in terms of being able to say, this company sells XYZ to these types of people, right? What's their offer and who do they offer it to? What's their offer? Who do they offer it to? Pharmaceutical company, S certain types of drugs, they have specialties, they have their niche. Every pharmaceutical co company does even bigger ones, tend to focus on a few major areas. Who's that for? Patients, to improve patients' lives. It says this right on the website. You better be able to say what they do succinctly. You better not show any hesitation here or they will not hire. You don't even know what they do and you want the job. And what do, what do they want you to do specifically in that position at the company? So not just what the company does, but what do they need you to do in that research role, in that project management role specifically? Research, build a case, do not get all the way to an interview stage and blow it. Now, if you've watched this far, I want you to join me tomorrow. It's Thursday. It's Thursday, March 4th. We're doing a special webinar on interview questions, specifically tough behavioral interview questions. It's tomorrow, Thursday, March 4th, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 
Make sure you sign up. I'll put a link below. Remember your value as a PhD and start thinking and acting like a successful industry professional.